Hey guys, this is Steve Humans from the marketing team at Powertran, and I'm here with my good buddy and Powertran Pro, Matt Jollymore. Matt, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. So the reason I asked Matt here today is because we want to show you exactly how simple it is to install one of our Python remote kicker steering systems, and we're going to do that on Matt's boat here today. As you can see right now, we have the old tie bar set up, but we're going to get rid of that. You need a few simple tools to do this job. A 3 16 Allen wrench, a half inch, a 9 16 and a 5 8 open end. You're going to need an adjustable wrench, a couple of sockets, just a couple of sockets. You're going to need 11 16 and a 9 16 along with our trusty screwdriver. And a, one of the most important pieces here is make sure you have a good tape measure and something to mark with. All right, so I went ahead and removed the tie bar from between the two motors, but I left the bracket on here because I wanted to point out that it may be possible to use this bracket when you go to install the linkage a little later on. You're definitely gonna end up using the, the uh, hardware that mounts the bracket to the motor when you go to install our bracket as well. Now the Python is designed to be run through the motor's steer tube, sometimes called a tilt tube. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, that's this threaded tube on the front of the motor here. A lot of the newer motors are gonna come with this tube already on there. Some of the older motors may not. Uh, if your motor does not have a steer tube, that's no problem because we do sell an auxiliary clamp on bracket. It's part number STK100. It looks like this and can be ordered right from the website when you go and order your Python. And I'm gonna show you how to install this in just a few seconds. All right, so to install this bracket, all you're gonna do is wrap these little clamp arms around the clamps on your motor like this. Once you've got this together, you just take a half inch wrench, tighten down the nuts, and you're ready for installation. And again, since Matt's motor already does have a steer tube from the factory, we're gonna go ahead and use that. Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do uh, when you go to install the system is figure out proper clearance. Now the great part about the Python is that the motor can actually be mounted on either side of the kicker, over here or over here. For the motor, you're gonna need about six and a half inches of clearance, and on the other side is gonna be the linkage, and on that side, you're gonna need nine inches of clearance. Now, because Matt's got his kicker motor mounted on this side of the big motor, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have the motor of our steering system mounted on this side, where we need a little bit less clearance. So now that we've got everything out of the way here, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just clean out the steer tube a little bit. Uh, a couple sprays from an air nozzle will work really well for that. I've already taken care of that, so we don't have to worry about it right now. We're gonna go ahead and install the actuator through the steer tube. Uh, remember, we're gonna put the motor on this side of the kicker, and the linkage actually mounts through this threaded end. So we gotta make sure that this threaded end is on this side of the kicker. And it's just as simple as sliding the tube right through like that. All right, so then we're gonna take our little plastic wiper nut here and install it on the linkage side of the steer tube. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is actually install the motor here. Now before we do that, I wanna make a note, your motor is gonna come shipped with one of these wavy washers. And what this does is this allows you to continue to twist the motor until the wires are exactly where you want them. So it's very important that you don't skip this step. And all you're gonna do is just take this wavy washer and place it on the coupler like this. Okay, now it's time to install the motor. It's really, really important that you see on the inside of here, there's a female end. There's a male end on the actuator here. You wanna make sure that they get married up right away. Now when you're doing this, you want to put a little pressure on the actuator here to keep those two married up as you wind this in by hand. Now he's tightening there until he feels the bearing inside bottom out. And what you want to do is wind up with the wires here about a quarter turn from pointing directly inside the boat. Having the wires directly inside the boat is the safest position for them and that wavy washer that we put on there in the beginning, that's gonna give us that little extra quarter turn to make sure those wires are there. Now it may take a few times to do that of taking the motor off and putting it back on in different positions to wind up with those wires a quarter turn away, but it's definitely worth it in the end so don't get frustrated. 
Okay, the last step of this, put the wrench on there, tighten her up, and get those wires facing right into the boat. All right, so we went ahead and routed the motor cable down through into the battery box because we're getting ready to mount the control box and give the system some power. Now, mounting the control box is very, very simple. We supplied you with some self-tapping screws, and the control box can be mounted anywhere inside the battery box uh, as long as it's going to stay relatively dry. Hooking everything up is very simple. You've got a two-prong connector here and a two-prong connector for your motor, and you're just going to slide those together to make sure they lock in place. The triangle uh, shaped piece over here, that's for the two button switch. And you remember that even the wireless setups do come with a two button switch that you can route through and mount anywhere in the boat. You can set that up right away if you'd like, or if you prefer, go ahead and toss it in a glove box and wait till later. To actually give the system some power, you're just going to take your red uh, wire here and hook it to the positive battery terminal, take your black wire and hook it to the negative battery terminal and you're good to go. Alright, so now that we've given the system some power, we can begin adjusting the actuator to make sure that we have full even turning from lock to lock. And to do that, simply grab either your two button switch or your wireless remote and run the actuator all the way in as far as it'll go. Then you can take a permanent marker and mark the spot on the actuator where it meets the wiper nut. Once you've done that, go ahead and extend the actuator out as far as it'll go and then measure the distance between that mark and the actuator where it meets the wiper nut. Once you have that distance, go ahead and cut it in half and make a mark at the exact center point of the actuator between the mark and where the actuator meets the wiper nut. Then go ahead and, and retract the actuator in until that mark is flush with the wiper nut. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and mount the linkage. And before you do that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do two things. First and foremost, just remove the black wire from the battery while you're working on there, just as a little safety precaution. And the second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your kicker motor is perfectly straightforward facing you into the boat. Now to mount the linkage, if you're gonna mount your quick disconnect option, you're gonna go ahead and use this ball and mount it upside down in a good spot somewhere near the center of the motor. If you don't have a hole here to mount that, that's okay. You can use the standard linkage bracket to do that. If you're just mounting our standard linkage, go ahead and mount the bracket. Now, since we're installing a standard linkage here, we can actually assemble the linkage and attach it to the bracket before we install this. Now, another note I wanna make about the linkage is if you're gonna go ahead and go with the quick disconnect option, it's a real simple changeover. All you're gonna do is remove the carriage bolts from your standard linkage, and this arm here is gonna replace the end with the grommet on. Put that on top, throw your carriage bolts in there, and then put the washers and nuts on, tighten everything up, and you're good to go. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to actually attach the linkage arm to the bracket. And I'm gonna show you the order right now. First, you'll take your spacer bolt and put the washer right on, on it. And you slide that through the rubber grommet on that end, put the plastic spacer on, and then attach that right to the bracket. Now on the bottom of that, you're gonna install your nylock nut, and that's what's gonna lock it all in place. To tighten this down, you're gonna take your 3 16 Allen wrench in the top of the spacer bolt like that, and your half inch wrench to the nylock nut. And when you tighten this, make sure you don't tighten it too much and risk compressing that grommet a little bit too much. You wanna have some good, nice play in it, and then you're gonna be okay. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to set up the, the bolting of the bracket to the motor. So you're gonna take the bolt and put your washer right on there. And that's gonna go through the mounting hole of the linkage bracket. You do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna place these bushings over the end there. And now we're ready to mount it into the motor. Now, if you don't have these specific bolts and bushings, it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that you've got a good secure place near the center of the motor to mount this bracket. All right, so we went ahead and attached the linkage and the bracket to the motor. And now that we've done that, we're going to attach the other end of the linkage to the actuator. And to do that, we're going to use this shoulder bolt. And that just twists right into the end of the threaded uh, actuator end. Now you'll notice that the shoulder bolt is extra long and there's, the reason for that is that there's adjustment built in there for all different types of motors. Once he's got it all the way down, the next step is to put the plastic spacer on on the bottom of the bushing. 
Then you bring the whole arm over the top of the shoulder bolt and place the spacer bolt through the shoulder bolt. Now that we've got that, we use our 3 16 Allen wrench to tighten it in place. All right, so we're gonna stop here because I wanna show you something very important. It's very important for the functionality of the system itself and the longevity and life of it that this linkage is parallel with the steer tube. If you get it up too high or crooked, you're putting a lot of undue stress on the ball screw and the motor, which could shorten the life of your system. If you need to make any adjustments, the shoulder bolt has adjustments built into it to change the height here. You can also adjust the bracket here, move the linkage underneath or flip the, the bracket around, however you need to do it to make sure that that linkage stays perfectly parallel with that steer tube. All right, so the last step to installing the linkage is to take this nylock nut and put it on the bottom of the shoulder bolt. And you're only going to want to do this once you've got everything in place and you're happy with the linkage being parallel with the steer tube. Once you've done that, you can take your 9 16 wrench and actually tighten it so that the two nuts are holding the linkage in place on the actuator. All right, and once you've got everything locked in place, there's one last step, and that's to take your wireless remote or your two-button switch and actually test the system. So you can see we've got full even lock-to-lock -lock turning on both sides. Now, if for some reason you didn't have that, you can adjust your linkage here by loosening these carriage bolts and sliding it back and forth until you find the good spot. Otherwise, you're ready to hit the water and start trolling with the python. So there you go, and that's exactly how simple it is to install one of these Python remote steering systems on your boat. But if you have any questions or run into any troubles as you're going through it, we invite you to give us a call. Our technical staff is available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and we'll be more than willing to walk you through anything you might be going through. You can also check out the website for detailed installation instructions, as well as an overview of the other products that we offer. We invite you to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and check out our YouTube channel for other helpful videos. Once again, I'd like to thank Matt Jollymore for being here with us today and helping us out with this. Well, by now you probably already have this installed and ready to hit the water. You know what? That's what we're going to do right now. Let's go fishing. Let's do it. <laughs>